and welcome back to the How To Podcast series. I have another amazing co-host joining me today on the show, and she's got a very amazing podcast, and I'm excited to have her on. We're going to be talking about all things podcasting. We want to encourage you as a podcaster to, to go after your dream and have your own show and do it the way you want to do it. And uh, Kendra's here with me today. Kendra, welcome to the How To Podcast series. Glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here talking about all things podcasting and my podcast, Crush Gasm. It's a show all about crushes, which who hasn't had one, right? Exactly. Um, <laughs> Good or <yes>. bad. <laughs> Tell us about your show. Tell us more. We, I, I love the idea. Well, you know, I love. I grew up loving slumber parties. I did not grow out of it. I love talking to people about what they love. So when, you know, the pandemic started to roll around, I had been writing for years, interviewing like musicians, like cosplayers, just creative types. And I thought, well, let's get it off the paper or website and let's like try to use my voice with it. And I was like, well, what's a topic that everybody kind of has in them? And I was like, well, crushes. I talk about it all the time with my friends. So Crushgasm was born in April 2021, been going strong. It's really fun. We crush on everything from real life people you might have loved in middle school. We won't use their real name. Don't worry. I know it's embarrassing if they find out Mm -hmm. Uh, to Disney characters to just like ideas. I had someone come on and talk about their crush on nostalgia, which was really cool. So you can crush on anything. It's really fun. Nice. Nice. So who, who is your audience? Who are you looking to talk to? Have you got some feedback from your listeners? You know, my audience, I was surprised. It leans heavily male. I thought with my, gra- I know, like I, my graphics are really girly, like the candy hearts and everything, like the candy you don't like at Valentine's Day, but it's a staple of the holiday mm-hmm. and pinks and pastels, but a lot of men, a lot of people, I think my age, a lot of millennials. So I think that's where we kind of stay. Sometimes we have some older folks on talking about a little older, like Felicia Rashad or something like that from the Cosby show. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> We just, I don't have a, you know, I don't pinpoint an audience. If you, if you like someone, listen to that episode, see if they like them for the same reason. It's nice. It's a very creative podcast. I love that you go in all different directions and you, 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 you talk about so many great things. It's, it's great. And I love the idea. It's a, it's very catchy. So it's great. It's good stuff. When I started, I was like, I go, you know, you always have to Google the name. Yeah. You know, like it was, I think, like a metal band had one song called Crush Gasm. And I was like, well, that's, well, I think that's okay. <laughs> so if you Google Crush Gasm, like this metal kind of looks like Metallica looking graphics will pop up. And then you'll have like my hearts and pastels. So it's very different. So you'll balanced. be able to tell the difference between the two, right? Yes. 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 Good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, maybe you should have that band come on and and talk about yeah, their songs. Should, maybe, hey, right, right, <laughs> go cross promotion. <laughs> there you go. That's great. Um, okay, so talk about your podcast journey. What did you know about podcasting prior to becoming a podcaster? Were you a podcast listener? Like, how much did you know yeah. about podcasting? No, uh, absolutely nothing. I didn't. <laughs> I was like, my husband had started one a few, like, I think it's kind of at the start of 2020 when all everything was shut down with his old roommate. And I watched him do that. And I was like, hmm, that might not be that hard. If he could do it, I could do it. And I hadn't really listened to any because I was like, like, my pet peeve is talk radio, which is ironic because my fa- one of my favorite shows is Frasier. So, <laughs> and, but then once I got into it, I know, and I hate nine to five jobs and my other favorite show is The Office. So, Come on. Well, I know. Yeah. So I watched him do it and I knew nothing. All I knew was how to book guests and how to do interviews. So I had the basis of what a podcast could be. I just was like, well, I kind of just need a mic and everything. I mean, what about you? You have like so many shows. Like, I have a few. Yeah, I'm collecting them like candy, like those candies mm-hmm. on Halloween. Um, yeah, it's just I just love podcasting because I get to meet great people. And mm-hmm. I, I didn't know much about podcasting before I started. I I love music, and I thought the idea of listening to a podcast would be draining. I didn't know if I wanted somebody talking in my ear while I was doing something. I thought that might mm-hmm. be distracting. But when I found podcasting, I fell in love because there was great people. They were talking about things that interested me and no one else 
I couldn't find anybody talking about the things I liked. And once I found them, I'm like, you're my person. I'm going to listen to every show and go back and listen to every episode. Go back to the beginning. I don't care what it sounded like. I love my podcast host and I want to know everything about them. And I feel like yeah. I, I feel like I know them, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of get like a parasocial relationship with the podcast. Host. I definitely have a few now that I'm into podcasting that I go back to. Uh, like there's a couple drag queens from drag race, RuPaul's drag race that I listen to theirs. Um, these guys, they had the show workaholics. Yeah. And since they don't have a show anymore, they started a podcast together. So I listened to theirs. So I think I like ones where they're friends, you know, yeah. I don't, <laughs> or it's like two friends or in workaholics case, four friends just talking. So I do. I'll have that in my ear because they're really funny. Yeah. Because if you watch conversation, if you watch like an interview on late night television, you have mm. a guest, have a guest come on. They're talking about their movie or their book or their song. And it seems so structured and so timed out and mm -hmm. very they don't go deep but then get yeah. that same guest to go on a podcast mm -hmm. and they just talk and you feel like you you know a different side of them that you don't mm -hmm. get on traditional media because it's like mm -hmm. them just unscripted having a conversation they make mistakes they flub up whatever but they you feel like you really get to know somebody better by listening yeah, to them on a podcast. They just get more time like Conan, like on his show, it's kind of, they have to have their bits, they have to promote, but on his podcast, it's like yeah. what an hour, hour and a half, like Steve Martin and uh, Martin short. Highly recommend that episode of Conan needs a friend. Yes. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. But yeah, I have, I like when there's a guest though, like I do like the friendship, but for me, it was all about like getting guests and just having new people on. And I really like when I started, I wanted to have an array of guests because I noticed like a few years ago when podcast started, it was very heavily male, heavily white, and Thank there was you. no women, especially black women, which I still think black women in podcasting is a very overlooked guest and host mm. in that regards. So I do try to diversify my guests when I am like booking looking and looking around like I'm always like well what can they bring because what I know like when I was little you watch tv you want to see yourself well podcasting is like a new form of entertainment so I'm like people want to hear themselves too so I do try to stay diverse with the with the bookings I love that I applaud that we need more I totally agree there are a plethora of people who look like me and sound like me and that is not a great representation of podcasting. I think we need as many voices from as many different communities. And like you said, I want to I want to hear a voice that I resonate with that mm -hmm. knows what it was like to live like me and be who I am. That that speaks to me as a listener. And the more people we can bring into podcasting, the better. That's what I yeah. look at. Yeah. And so when I, you know, we're going to do to talk about like booking guests. Yes, let's go. What what are you talking? What are you thinking about? Well, when I go to book a guest, I think like that's a hard part. If you're going to go for an interview podcast, you're like, how do I get guests? Because you don't want to like just rely on the same people, you know, all the time that you could just hit them up, like send them a text. So I think there's like really good sites. There's Facebook groups. You can always go there. You run the gamut, though, of those people being a little unreliable. Mm -hmm. yep. So there's also matchmaker.fm. Yeah. which is people that want to be on shows. They want to be guests. It's a really good avenue. But my thing is also, if you see someone you like, or you like see them in a, like, maybe not, you're not going to get Angelina Jolie right off the bat. But if you see like a musician that you might like, just try to find their contact and go for it. What's the worst they're going to say is no. You know, they're not going to rip you a new one. They're just going to yeah. be like, oh, you know, nobody's yeah. that mean. They're going to be like, no, thank you right now. So I say just find their email contact. That's what I usually do. And I've had some pretty good success with that. Mm. So who have who have you swung for the fences and you thought they're never going to respond? They're never going to say yes or even, you know, I'm, I'm never going to hear back. And they did. Tell me. That was, story. Um, I haven't because I've been freelance writing for since when did I leave? 2010 ish. So I'm on like a lot of email lists, like PR and stuff. And I, I will get emails and I'm like, this person's ever going to say yes. Like, why would this person? So um, I got an email about Daniel Franzese. He was Damien and Mean Girls. He was the, you, the mm -hmm. she doesn't, she don't, you don't even go here. <laughs> you don't go here. <laughs> um, That one. 
And I got the email and I was like, well, I don't think that he would be on my show. So I ignored the email. And then his PR lady emailed again and was like, did you happen to see my email? So I was like, well, if they're looking. So I emailed back and I was like, well, this is kind of the gist. And on my show, you have to do a quick questionnaire. It's nothing. You don't have to go into detail. I just need to know like the who, what, when, where. So I can have like get those questions out of the way beforehand and go in prepared. But we'll talk about that. And I, so I was like, oh, he might not want to like do the questionnaire. I didn't want to bother him, but I, I risked it and I had him on the show and he talked about his crush on Kermit the Frog. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Kermit? Actually, like he <laughs> developed actually with the Muppet Babies and has since continued on. <laughs> I know. See? But you're shocked. But Kermit, actually, this is the second time he's come up. Um, it wasn't this one guest official crush, but she was um, she grew up queer, but not knowing because at the time there wasn't really a term for what she was feeling. Yeah. So she actually pretended to like Jonathan Taylor Thomas, a big 90s icon, because that's who everyone liked. And she was yeah. like, oh, I like Patrick Swayze because that's who her mom liked. And I was like, well, who? would have been your crush if you could have just been open about it she's like honestly kermit is like the perfect man for me <laughs> she's also a puppeteer so <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> i love it because it's not easy no. being green so you know no, so no, there no. you go so we Kermit's also found out love. uh daniel had a thing for green he liked um one of the ninja turtles michelangelo who it's another pre <laughs> recent crush we talked about from ninja turtles and um shrek <laughs> Those are cute. all green. There you go. I yeah. love it. So, so on the show, yeah. we kind of we kind of sometimes we'll stay light, but sometimes people are like, Kendra, I didn't know this was going to be therapeutic. I'm not going to be breaking down walls about like a crush on like <laughs> Kermit the Frog or what have you. Aladdin. We've had him too. <laughs> okay. So for a new podcaster listening and they are early days in their podcast and they want to have great interviews. What kind of things you mentioned having a having a list that people fill out for you? Can you give us more details about that? But what else can we do to find great guests? Where else can we look? I say for great guests, just look, keep on social media. There's always like hashtags for that. Yeah. Check those out. Other podcasters are also really great guests because they not only have the equipment already ready to go, but they can talk on a mic and that's proven. So I always say if you are starting out, start with podcasters as your guests and then grow from there. It's a good tip. I like that. Because you're going to, you're gonna, they're, they know kind of what's what to expect and they're good. ready to go. And I think for interviewing, I do have a little questionnaire because I hate when you go into an interview at, like you said, you talk to musicians. And what is the one thing they don't want to be asked? They don't want to be asked like what their band name means or <laughs> anything you can find on their Wikipedia is probably something you should not ask them. Yes. So the questionnaire kind of gets out those initial, like I call it first date questions. So then yeah. you can kind of build off of those to build more in-depth questions. Also watch people or listen to people that you like interview. For mm. me, that's like, I love watching hot ones. Do you watch that? on? Yeah. YouTube? That's a great with the wings. I don't yes. know how I could ever do that show. Okay. No. I, I it's I it, the heat doesn't bother me. It's the taste. I hate buffalo sauce, and that's the mm. first one they start with. And I'm yeah. like, I would just gag from that smell. <laughs> but yeah, watch people yeah. that you admire. Like I love Conan. I like Sean Evans from Hot Ones. I grew up watching Carson Daly on uh, MTV's yep. TRL, mm -hmm. and he's uh, he's notorious for I well I guess it's called code switching, which I don't think's great to do. It's where if you had a hip hop guest, he'd be a little more urban. If he had a white guy, like so that I wouldn't just suggest, but just the whole keeping on your toes thing of live nice. television. Nice. One thing that I did early <laughs> on as an interviewer is I went and listened to podcasts where I had zero interest in the topic, mm -hmm. but I wanted to listen to how the interviewer interviewed. And I didn't want to get distracted by falling in love with the content because I wanted to listen to a good interviewer and listen to an interviewer that I'm like, well, that question didn't really sit or I didn't really like how they did that or mm -hmm. how they introduced their guest or their, you know, I wanted to learn without being distracted by the content. So I purposely mm -hmm. picked a podcast <laughs> like for me that has zero interest. And then I'm listening to them talk about whatever, but then I just zone in on the interviewer. And I'm like, oh, and I pick up tips from them going, I could use that. That's a great question or that's a great way to 
introduce your guest or close the episode. And I would mm-hmm. kind of learn from them. So is there anybody that inspires you then beyond like Conan and shows like that, that you kind of like, well, that's a great interviewer. Oh, um, I'm in the, I did not make these rankings podcast network. That's right. And I am obsessed with Harvey Laguerre on men are the prize. I think he's a really good interviewer. He kind of has that Montel Williams vibes, which I'm a child of the nineties. So any like nineties talk show host, if you're like that, I'm going to be in love with you. And he's just really good at, um, just going with the flow. What he told me that he does, he was actually inspired by Donahue. And he said what he noticed about Donahue when he was younger and watching was Donahue never interrupted his guests. So I thought that was good advice. <laughs> and that also I found for editing is if I talk <laughs> while my guest is talking, it makes more work for me after we were done the interview. So I try to stay quiet as well. And you know what? My wife, my wife actually likes it because I listen better at home now. When she's talking, <laughs> I'm not interrupting her because I'm used to doing it like this. So it's actually paying off for my relationships as well. So <laughs> hey, it's a win-win, right? Yeah, it's a balance. I also think like uh, being able to volley, because I have my questions written. I have like what I want to cover, but you have to know if they already, like I will, I usually don't have the camera on because I am listening, but I'm also notating like, oh, they already mentioned this. So let's not, you don't want to ask the question and they already answered. So be able to volley, be able to like readjust your interview too. So the listening skills do come in handy because if they mentioned, we'll go back to musicians, like how they got into music. And that was like your sixth question for some reason. <laughs> you don't want to ask it then. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. How else do you keep yourself organized? Do you have any little tips for us? Oh, organization is my favorite thing. My husband probably is going to pop up and be like, oh, God, no, not that <laughs> organization. I, I have uh, a very detailed color-coded spreadsheet. I think if you're going to have guests, yes, you need to have it. Like you need to have your guest name, have their contact uh, ready to go. The topic you're going to talk about, the date that it's going to go up in case they need to know for their you know side to promote, everything like that. Also, the thing like if you need to record it, edit, re- like you know, I also write the questions, so it's always like write the questions, record, edit, upload, done. <laughs> yeah, have your little steps ready, but yeah, color coordinating. <laughs> Nice. Do you do anything special for your guests after the interview is done as far as artwork or communication when the podcast is ready? How do you deal with it after they leave your screen and they're gone? Once they go, you know, some of them, you know, that's it. We'll never, we sometimes don't see each other again, but I do try to stay in touch with a lot of ones. If if the vibe was good and I, I felt it, I always do the artwork for the shows. Of course, you need those for the YouTube screen and anchor. If they want those, I'll send them over, but I post it. And I've started because of Canva, shout out Canva, the best thing in the world. I've been doing like for about three weeks after you're on my show and you're on Crushgasm, I still promote because on every Saturday, I post the past three episodes. So I keep tagging you. I keep sharing on Tuesday I because my show comes out on Wednesday. So on Tuesday, I'm going to like say, hey, check out the latest before the newest so the promotion keeps coming so nice. i want you to be like <laughs> yeah i'm always like tag 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 make sure you have the socials too that's another great thing about guests you have to have their social media to tag them and is that on your initial questionnaire that you get from them yes, that you get that information yes. okay mm-hmm. yeah i'm like give me and also their pronouns you want to make them feel yep, comfortable exactly you know, I mean, if I wanted to be called a different name, I would respect you calling me that. So yeah, if they have a good. pronoun, I always get that. And how to always ask how to pronounce their name before an interview yes. starts. Even if you think it's the most common name, <laughs> their parents might have thrown something wild in there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And one thing I do, I have a podcast for authors. And sometimes these authors are gracious and send me a copy of their book. Mm-hmm. I don't make it mandatory, but I'm always appreciative of doing that. And so how I repay them is I live near Niagara Falls. So I take their book to Niagara Falls and I take a picture with the falls in the background. So they have artwork without my logo and with my logo, I give them both. And I send that back to them in an email because I have an author, for example, that wrote a book and she lives in Australia. Mm. She's never been to Canada. She's never been to Niagara Falls. 
good chance she may, may never go there, but mm-hmm. her book made it there. And oh, even though her episode is old and it's been out for a long time, to bring new life to that episode and bring people back to that episode they might not have heard, I post that picture and tag her. And now it gives new life to that episode. She's excited. Her book is there. She got this picture. And now she wants to talk about it again, even if the episode is six months old. It just yeah. brings people back because, again, people might come to our podcast today not knowing we have X number of episodes in the past. And mm-hmm. all they know is what we released today. Mm-hmm. They don't know about that episode from a long time ago. And they would love it if they knew. So I love bringing back old episodes and seasonality. And if there's something mm-hmm. happens in the news and I have an episode yeah. about that, bring it back. Let people mm-hmm. know about that. That's really Yeah, good. I'm always like uh, checking like Twitter for trends. And if I see somebody that like if their crush is trending, I'll like repost it and tag and say like, hey, if you like this, unless they're trending for a bad reason. Yeah. <laughs> Usually we don't have anyone crushing on anyone bad, though. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> we haven't had any of those crazy crushes. <laughs> the other thing we talked about as well is it's podcasting when you work full time. Yeah, because I'm so going to be starting. I'm going to be starting my first full time job. I've always freelanced or contract or part time. So it's going to be an undertaking. But I know you full time. So how do you do it? Especially I only have one. You have like multiple. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's all about being organized to your point. I love how you approach your podcast. Um, yeah, you just need to have a plan and you need to know, I guess when you're an early, early on in podcasting and make a decision, you have to look at your calendar and go, Mm -hmm. I only have so many days and I only have so much time between work and podcasting. Something has to go away to make room for this. I don't, I can't just add an extra day to my week. So I have to say no to something. So Mm -hmm. obviously you don't want to say no to your relationships. You don't want to say no to yourself. You need sleep, you need to eat, you need to work. So you're left with the remainder of time. So for me, I exited out of television, which seemed like just a mindless, sometimes a waste of time. I do I do enjoy entertainment, but I could just sit, I sit now and I watch a TV show and I get antsy. I just like, I could be, I could be doing the thing. I could go do something, I could go <laughs> do something else. And I find that my my need for entertainment has been dwindled a little bit because I have this other thing that gives me passion. Mm -hmm. I get to meet great people and have conversations with people around the world. That makes me happy. So I could watch television or I could do this. So I've been giving away that piece of my my time to create space. You just have to find out what it is for you that you can give up, but you do Mm -hmm. have to give up something to create time to do all the work to make this happen. So you, you were like, no TV. Was there ever a point where you thought maybe just like having one day a week with no podcasting? Because that's what some of the people in our network do. It's like the their wives or husbands are like, this is the day you will not do get on that computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, it's Fridays. I don't have any interviews, no pre-interviews. I have nothing on a Friday. And I also, my wife works till 7 p.m. at night. So I have all my calendars end at 7 p.m. So I'm upstairs waiting for her when she comes home and I'm not letting that bleed into our time together. I just cut it off. So Mm -hmm. that, that for me gives me some boundaries and I want to respect her and be there for her and be, not be an absent husband by being in the basement and she's looking for me. Right. So So where is is this guy? Yeah. Like, like even cutting out TV and like having the day and the time set, like you have so many, but with a job, it just seems impossible, you know? <laughs> yeah. Batch recording helps recording a whole bunch when you do have time. Um, It is quite daunting to have this much. Like this is my ninth conversation today. Oh. And I've been in Holland. I've been in the U S <laughs> several times today, Canada. <laughs> so I'm jumping around all over the globe. Um, and then on top of that, I just have to do all the edits. So mm. like, I, it's not over when I hit stop on the recording, I still have to do all the behind the scenes work. So it's all about figuring out what works best for me. And so what I do is this episode, I'm going to edit right away because it's fresh in my mind. I remember all my edit points. I know everything I want to focus in on because it's fresh. So I add time to my calendar after each interview so that I can deal with the basics right away. 
Because if I leave this for two weeks, A, my yeah. guests might be going, hey, where's the podcast? And B, I might forget some of those really cool moments that I really want to highlight if, if, if time gets in the way. So I just, that's how I personally do it. And it really works for me. So I get my podcast edited usually within a day or two of recording and I post to YouTube right away. So my guest wow. has a copy and I just, then it's off my plate and then I can move on to the next one. So I try to follow everything through as much as I can. Th things happen though. Mm -hmm. And you need to I be able to adjust. But for the most part, that's how I am. I'm a pretty, I, I like your approach. I'm very disciplined and I like to follow the tasks through and keeping track. So your spreadsheet is a great idea, by the way. It's excellent. Oh, yeah. You have to have a, a specially color coordinated. I do um, every 12 episodes. I don't like, to, I also like to stay fresh. So I don't like a crush to repeat or on my show, I have themes like we'll have a disney crush or like saturday night live or politician no one's ever done that one but if, if you did i wouldn't yeah. mind yeah. and um so if that was like you know on the third week it's not i'm not going to let someone do it again for in the 12 week clump and every dozen so that's why it's color coordinated as well so i know like oh we already did this one in this bunch can't repeat it until then so i like it because i also like write about every like if you picked, say, an athlete, I would write about my athlete crush on a Monday in, on the website, crushgasmpodcast.com. And then Wednesday, the, yeah, the website <laughs> would drop, and then the episode drops Wednesday. And then I do like a top 10 on Thursday, because going back to Carson Daly, TRL top 10 is like in my blood. So I could write I a list like it. that. <laughs> I love it. I think as a Canadian, I think you need a Canadian crush, something maybe around Canadian actors. Canadian mm. uh, comedians. You mentioned uh, Martin Short, Canadian. Oh. So, <laughs> hey, you know, maybe there's Ryan, Ryan Reynolds and, um, you know, there's lots there. That, that'd be kind of interesting to get a well, Canadian come one. On, come on back down and give us. We have done Degrassi. There you go. <laughs> Big Degrassi fan. It's uh, one of my favorite shows. But yeah, she had a Degrassi YouTube channel. So she came through and talked about Usually we only have one person, but for that one, I let her have pick several characters. So that was a lot to digest. Did uh, they include Drake in that? Was Jim Jimmy in hers? No, she did not. He was on Jimmy. the show. I know, I right? know. I went, to, yeah, I went to Jimmy Kimmel when he performed, just because I love Degrassi. It's like I wasn't yeah. into his music, but I was like, what if I can try to meet him? And everybody standing there was like a mix of his fans and Degrassi fans. So everyone was like, well, if he comes over, do we call him Jimmy, Aubrey, because that's his given yeah, name, name, or Aubrey, Drake? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we were like, all con he didn't come over though, sadly. Because at Kimmel, you try to meet the celebrities, anybody ever in L.A., go to Jimmy Kimmel's studio, go in the back of it. There's that alley. Meet, Try to meet any guests that's on the show. They got to walk through. I spent most of my college years in that alley meeting celebrities, not in class. Well, there's a that's a hidden gem right there. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, anybody, as we're on that topic, anybody stand out? You're like, you met them and you're like, they're such nice people. Oh, yeah. Uh, my friend was a bit because like. You always want to go with a buddy just so someone could take your picture. So uh, when people from Lost were on, I always went with my friend to take her picture. I got to say Lost cast was phen phenomenally that Dominic Monaghan, such a sweetheart. But personally, for me, John Krasinski from The Office and his wife, Emily Blunt, were real big sweethearts. Aww. Oh, and my, my favorite person I ever met back there was probably uh, Michael C. Hall from Dexter. <laughs> Come on. I love Dexter. But it was it was scary, though, because... Um, the, you're back there not just with fans, you're there with the autograph seekers, like the people that this is their job to get autographs, and they wanted him to sign knives. So they just had big knives, and he and they could sometimes push. So I was like, please do not push with all your butcher knives. <laughs> and he signed all the knives, too, for people. Uh, but that was really fun. <laughs> no, that's a story. I love that. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Um, yeah, Dexter was was an amazing show. My wife and I watched every episode, so... Big fan, big fan. Um, cool. So again, for anybody starting a podcast, it's a big task. It it sounds super simple. There's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes that people don't recognize or realize at the beginning. Um, any other time tips and things that we can do as a new podcaster just to, to be successful? Because what I don't want is for somebody to start and then five episodes in go, mm -hmm. this is a lot of work. I can't believe I... 
what am I signing up for? I don't know if I can do all this. Just being think, real, real for people up front. Mm-hmm. This is really what it takes. It's and if you're going to do a good job, really invest your time. And here's some ideas. I think just don't go one at a time when you first start to get and don't release it right away. Like I would say bank at least five or so yes. and definitely have what you want as like if you're doing interviews get those interviews stacked. If you're just going to be like one-on-one or something like if it's just you talking or if it's with your friends, definitely have it kind of mapped out for at least a dozen so you can get to that point. And I think in a dozen episodes, you'll really like work out all the kinks. And I wouldn't release until all 12 were done. That's what I think. Nice. So, so you have all of it done. And then when it's out, you can kind of like work your way around what went wrong with this episode or what went right. And then from that 12, grow from there. What do you do to find feedback about your podcast? Maybe there's something that people listening are like, mm, that part's not really working for me as a listener. And I would love it if you could just tweak this a little bit. Maybe your music's too loud, for example. And you're like, oh, I didn't realize. Like, did you get any kind of feedback on your show? No, not really. Don't give okay. me any type of feedback like that. Um, <laughs> I think it's been pretty good so far. <laughs> good. I love it. Because I think if you can get some kind of information and feedback from your listeners, Mm -hmm. good or bad, it just kind of helps you to go, oh, I didn't think of that part. You know, maybe, maybe you have a cat and your cat is always in the background and your listeners are like, um, Hey, can you, can you turn (laughs) the cat down? Like I, all I hear is the cat, you know? Oh, I didn't even notice. (laughs) I did have one. I did a series, um, episodes 90 through 99. We did all 90. So it was like, We're going to crush on 1990, 91, and so forth and so on. And I had this one guy on YouTube who was like, you missed this, this, and not to be mean. He was just like, oh, you didn't talk about this. And I'm like, I wish I could talk about everything that happened in that year. So I think just like that would help. That's kind of the only feedback I've ever gotten is like, you missed this and this. And I'm like, well, I'm not a docu-series. I have like an hour (laughs) with these guests. I don't want to make them go through the 365 days of 1997. Yeah. Well, what that tells me, too, is you have a very active listener who really cares about your show. He was really into the 90s series and he kept commenting for a while. I haven't heard from him in a minute. But yeah, it was kind of cool to have somebody every week kind of to, to talk to. That's nice. I love it. I love it. Um. So, yeah, you are off camera. You're piled up with boxes. You're in the <laughs> you're, you're actually in yeah. the process of moving. Big change is happening for you. Congratulations on the new job. And all of that. And I know that you'll you'll strike a balance between podcasting and work. You'll you'll definitely find your groove. You're a very organized person. So I don't think you're going to have a problem there. So I'm excited to to hear how the podcast goes (laughs) on and continues Um, again. So where everybody can find your show and where you are most active on social media so that we can connect with you and know more about the show. Uh, you can find everything at crushgasmpodcast.com. There you'll find all my blogs. So you get to learn more about me every single week because I'm always writing about a crush I have. You know, whatever my guest brings me, I got one for that too. Sometimes I don't and I got to stretch it just a little, but not lie. I just have to like make up a kind of a skew it in a way like we did we're doing horror movies horror movies aren't my thing this week. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I had to pick one that I love and that's Get Out. And what else? And I'm most active. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram. I don't. I don't really do TikTok. I'm not that cool. Hmm. I'm, not, I'm not cool. Hip Gen Z. I'm. I'm old school. I'm also on Facebook, but everything's at crushgasmpodcast.com. Easiest Just way look to look for find that you. purple heart. Well, right now I actually drew a new heart. It's a orange, and it looks like a pumpkin for for Halloween. <laughs> but it's usually <laughs> a purple heart that says Crush Gasm. There you go. It's amazing. It's a great podcast. I love the variety. And you are so creative with your your episodes and your your guests, everything. It's such a great podcast. So everyone go listen and make sure you subscribe and follow and do all that. And every episode that comes out of Crushgasm will show up right on your phone. You don't have to do anything. They're free, which is amazing. Yep. So there you go. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you for being part of the podcast. Good luck with the move and everything. And I hope everything goes well. And I would love to have you back in the future and get an update on the show. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Hey, it's Dave jumping on here at the end. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for listening to the How to Podcast series. Putting this out there for you. You're starting a podcast and you're like, Dave, the technology is giving me a headache. 
This editing thing is, I don't know, it's banana pants. I can't figure it all out. Um, and you're thinking, if there was somebody who could help me with my podcast, I would pay them to do the editing for me. Guess what? I'm actually doing that. I have clients now, past guests who've been on the show, on one of my other podcasts, on this podcast. I'm doing some podcast consulting. I'm doing podcast editing. I'm helping with people launching their podcast, getting it, all the technology stuff, all getting your podcast and all the players, helping you with your YouTube channel, your website. Oh, it just goes on and on. It goes on and on. And I would love to help you. So instead of going to Fiverr or Upwork, I've I've been on there. I keep trying to get on for jobs and nobody's paying attention to me. And I'm, I need attention. <laughs> I would rather work with you as a listener of the show. So here's what I'm saying. Go to howtopodcast.ca, leave me a voice message, tell me what you need, and let's work out something that works for you and your budget. And if you need full service or you just need something quick like a drive through type service, I'm there for you. I got you. And if you like what you hear on any of my seven podcasts, I can do that for you. I can. And I'd love to work with you because you are amazing. And I'm there to help you, whatever you need. How to podcast.ca. Reach out. Let me know what I can do to help you with your podcast. Thank you for listening catch you on the next episode. Take care.